Karen Bryan for NMA Heat. I'm here with Frankie Edgar, former UFC lightweight champ, and he's taking on Jose Aldo for the featherweight championship uh, at UFC 156. And first and foremost, before we start, I have to say this. I don't know if you guys have seen this one uh, with the belt and everything. So you've got a couple of versions of this figure out, right? Yeah, yeah, I got one of these. I think another brand, too. So, yeah. So it's pretty cool. My kids dig it, you know? Well, that's what I was going to ask because you've got a four-year-old and a two-year-old. So right. do they, I know they're not supposed to be called dolls. They're action figures, well, right? Funny, they, do, they do call, they call them Dada doll. Dada doll. <laughs> So, you know, yeah. <laughs> do they have you fighting anybody else? Do they have the. Uh, no, they usually just throw it around and stuff like that. I say pretty adorable, just like daddy, you know? Nice. <laughs> That's very nice. Well, I think it's cool. I think I, I, the first time you saw it, I don't know what your reaction was, but it's got to be. No, it's 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 wild to be, uh, you know, a plastic figure. You know, right. you grew up as a kid playing with stuff like that, and, yeah. you know, now I'm, I'm actually one of them. So it's wild. It is pretty cool. Well, we talked about the fact over here at lunch that, you know, this is a big fight for you. We all know that. But how many title fights in a row now? This will be my seventh, seventh one in a row. So does that make it more difficult or, or a little easier to kind of get your head in the right space and, and approach the fight? I think easier, you know. Uh, it becomes a kind of a routine. I know what to expect. There's going to be no surprises. Uh, I know how to prepare in the week leading up and, you know, what to expect once we get fight night. Yeah. How do you feel about the fact Dana's been calling this a super fight? Because, I mean, really, you and, Fran- and Jose are big, huge superstars and inadvertently we just got a title fight that turned out to be a super fight yeah you know I, I think it's just you know they've been talking about this fight for a while you know Dana Lorenzo mm-hmm. the fans the media and uh, here we are you know we never have it the thing is I wonder not that I don't think you're prepared because obviously you are but is there any part of you that thought well maybe one fight at 145 first would have been good no you know I, I feel it's just perfect um, yeah I don't want to go fight a three-round fight. I like I like preparing for a five-round fight. It makes you train a little harder. It makes mm-hmm. you be a little more dedicated. And uh, um, you know, I feel like I'm just not skipping a beat. I'm just going right to my next fight, and it's yeah. not a title fight. When we were having lunch here, folks, and I, I I'm sure I consume more calories than you did. Yeah. How hard is it for you to get to this weight? It's it's, it's not gonna be hard at all. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty close. I'm within reach already, and uh, that's just from eating correctly. I'm not like you know starving myself or anything like that. I'm just you know watching what I put in my body and uh, the weight's coming off. And you could, we were joking about this. You could make 135 if ever you wanted well, to, needed to. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm I'm sure I could. I you know, depend. How I'd feel, I don't know, but uh, you know that's not something I'm really looking towards until right. until we'll see. You know. So when you look at Aldo, what do you what do you find? Uh, you know, are his strongest weapons? What do you feel that you've got to be most prepared for? Hey, you know, I think he's one of the most dynamic strikers we have in, yeah. in the sport. Um, you know, his kicks, his knees, his punches. You know, he's he's very good like that. He's explosive. So, uh, you know, uh, no no secret that he has you know very devastating leg kicks. So. And I want to talk about who you brought in to train, you know, to train you for him to prepare as in Barboza, right? Yeah, it's in Barboza and uh, Marlon Moraes, you know, very good uh, Muay Thai practitioners and obviously very successful in MMA. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I think they, uh, you know, it's tough to emulate anybody, you know, have one person to fight like another person. But, you know, if you can get as close as you can, yeah. uh, you're doing it right. And these guys doesn't get much closer than that. And do you feel that that was... Not that there was a, a a hole in your game, but do you feel like that's the one thing that you went, you know what, I really need to bring this up higher than, than more so than maybe your wrestling or other things that you'll need against him? Yeah, for sure. You know, you bring in guys that are that expertise is, yeah. is in areas that maybe your expertise is, it's just going to bring your whole your whole game better offensively, defensively. It's actually brought our whole team has gotten better because of these guys around us. Nice. Well, and I'm sure you've improved them as well because well, he did pretty well last week, right? Yeah, he did pretty well, but you know, all the credit's <laughs> to him, you know. <laughs> Well, you're just humble. That's the thing. The other question I had is, you know, you've been in these these great wars. Everybody calls you, you know, talks about your comebacks and how you can get in there and you're just in these scraps. Do you enjoy those kind of fights or are you looking for the day that you get the five-second knockout and you yeah, just I get mean, to walk you know, away? I'm, I'm not going to lie. I would love a five-second knockout. You know, who wouldn't? You just go, go in there and take care of business and leave. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, my fights have been pretty epic and, mm-hmm. and it definitely makes a, a little legacy for yourself and, and people remember those fights. We do, but I feel like I, wor- I worry for you that the damage you take. Because you're still a young man, and I- but you've been doing this for a while now. I mean, do you do you worry at all about taking the damage? No, nah, I feel fine. You know, yeah. I'm not slurring my speech yeah. or like that. And uh, you know, my nose is a little crooked, and yeah. I got a little banged up ears. But you know, right. it's p- part of the trade. Now, how do you guys train? Because I there's different theories going around. Some guys that really get in there and bang in training because they feel like, well, if I can really war in camp, you know, when I get to the to the fight, it's going to be easy. And other people think you shouldn't do too much damage to yourself and, and save, you know, save your chin for the fight. So how do you train? Like, how hard do you like to go? Yeah, you know, we go hard. We spar. Yeah. We have the big gloves and the 
headgear on, make sure you don't get cut. You know, we're definitely throwing pretty hard, but you know, you're with partners you trust. Mm -hmm. You know, teams, teammates you trust, and uh, you know, there's definitely control. You're not trying to take each other's heads off. Because I've heard of certain fighters, and I don't want to name names, but yeah, that maybe got knocked out in camp, and you know, then it gets to their fight, and they don't last as long. Right. I mean, it could happen. You know, I don't think it's something you want to. You know, if you know you have a good chin, then leave it at that. I don't think you should try testing it all the time. You know? Right. Well, you got a pretty good chin. Eh? So far, so good. Yeah. <laughs> and we were talking to you. You've never been, never been submitted, right? And never been knocked out. Never no. finished at all. No, no, never finished. Nice, nice. Now Aldo is quite the finisher, though often. Right. So, right. Yeah. Um, certainly, though. I mean, we, we know that you're you're fighting on neutral ground. This fight is in Vegas, but really, I mean, what do you think it is about your style that makes makes him nervous I just think well you know the fact that I can mix it up well you know yeah. um, obviously my boxing is pretty pretty crisp and, uh, and and the fact that you know I have great takedowns and uh, there hasn't been one person I haven't been able to take down in a, in a fight yet so uh, you know I'm sure that's something he's aware of and something he's been trying to address during this camp people go back and forth on the fights with Benson Henderson which ones did you win which ones did he win this and that does that bother you at all I mean are you able to just kind of let that go and, and, and not look back. Yeah, I'm past it, you know. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. Uh, I was upset when it happened, uh, you know, but I'm sure he thought he won him. I thought I won him. Whatever. Yeah. It doesn't matter now. You know, 10 years down the line, no one's going to see it, uh, anything. They're just going right. to see I have two losses to Ben, ben Henderson. Yeah. And, you know, he's been doing well. I mean, he did well against Nate. Uh, you know, he's proven himself to be a, a dominant champion at lightweight. Well, you've certainly, like you said before, had some epic, like, there's a little bug that I'm going to get Blood on the canvas, people. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, you, you've had these legacy fights, and you know, with with Gray, you, you were hit for the cycle on that one. Um, great fights with BJ. What, what stands out in your own mind as as the ones that you know? If you had to pick a couple to to stick on the wall at the Hall of Fame and say these are the ones that define me, who do you pick? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that the second one with BJ. You know, just uh, and the second one with Gray. You know, yeah. those are. Uh, you know, I, I beat BJ in a close fight to win the title, and, and everyone was counting me out. The second fight, same as a fluke, and I was able to kind of dominate him, you know, that, that next fight. And then uh, just the fight with Gray where I was down, and everyone thought it was going to be like a repeat of, the, of our second fight, and I was able to finish him. So th those two fights definitely had a lot of significance to me. Very nice. And, that, and that, it, I mean, I just remember where the Abu Dhabi fight. I was like, I'm like, he's, like, he's doing this. <laughs> he's really doing this. And, I mean, do you, do you feel the crowd start to come around to you? I mean, are you aware of all the stuff yeah. that? Yeah, you definitely, are... you're definitely here. Actually, even more so. With, you know, the crowd was, I think, pro BJ. You know, yeah. at the Abu Dhabi. You know, everyone, everyone loves BJ. I mean, she, I, I love BJ. Totally. You know? And uh, but especially in Boston, you, you know, the crowd was going back and forth. I mean, yeah. you hear BJ, BJ chance, Frankie, Frankie chance. It was going back and forth throughout the whole fight. So that was pretty interesting. That's good. And obviously, too, this you have the opportunity to be a, a title holder in different divisions. Only a couple of people have done that. Does that weigh on your mind at all? Does that have any significance to you? You know, I'm not trying to really think about it. I mean, I'm aware of it, obviously. Yeah. You know, everyone's talking about it. But uh, I'm just worried about winning my next fight. That's going to take care of everything. But when my next fight, I'll be the champion and, uh, and I'll, you know, cement that two weight classes and you know, two belts, two weight classes. So. And when you look at what could be next for you if you get past Jose Aldo just this past weekend, Ricardo Lamas just really devastated Eric Koch, and Eric was somebody who was supposed to be fighting Jose. So I'm just curious what you think of the landscape right now and other people that you see in your division. Yeah, I think 45 is, is becoming a very stacked division, yeah. you know. Uh, it's like, you know, 50, everyone talks about 55 and 45 mm -hmm. is following suit, you know. Um, Dustin Poirier, uh, Ricardo Lamas, Hayoki, mm -hmm. uh, Clay Guida, uh, uh, coach and then uh, you know just uh, Cub Swanson yeah. um, who was the, uh, the the German guy uh, Dennis Seaver you know there's, there's a lot there's a lot of really good guys in this weight class well they are and you know that you're always going to be somebody with a target because beating you would be is always going to be a big deal to somebody right right you know they got the bullseye pain on my back yeah. and uh, that's a good thing though yeah and was it really just the fact that it was a loss to Benson the second time that made you decide to finally go to weight or was it just that you know, that was the right time and you just kind of came to that decision. Because certainly I feel like sometimes if somebody, everybody's telling you what you should do, part of you probably goes, I don't want to do what everybody's telling me I should do because I know what I should do. Right, you know, but, in, in all honesty, me and my team, we were talking about going down to 45 yeah. regardless, you know. Yeah. Uh, we feel it was just something, you know, to, to it's another another way to pursue my career, you yeah. know, some new landscape, something new. Um, I, I think win or lose, I probably would end up down to 45. Yeah. And how's Jersey treating you these days? I know after Hurricane Sandy, things were a little yeah, dicey it's, it's, still are. 
yeah, it's still still pretty crazy on the shore. You know, uh, my hometown's times are pretty good. There's you know the the cer certain areas on the water are still banged up. The yeah. barrier islands like seaside and stuff like right. that is uh, people are letting people over there. It's starting to starting to build back up. Hopefully uh, they can rebuild you know somewhat before summer because yeah. uh, I love the, the the summer on the shore. On the shore, of course you do. And lastly, if you want to go ahead and make your pitch for if if MMA gets legalized in New York City, yeah. I mean, November. You know, Dana's talking about having a 20th anniversary show there. How 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 badly would you like to be on that card? I'd love it. I mean, uh, it's a, it's a, it would be a dream. You know, yeah. most famous. It's called the world's most famous arena. It's you know, I train across street uh, right at Hensel Gracie's Academy. Yeah. So uh, for me to fight there, I mean, I, I think that place was built for combat sports. You know what I mean? Ali Frazier, stuff like that. So, yeah, I would love to uh, compete in, in the garden. Oh, it would be great. It would be great. Well, listen, Mandalay, Mandalay Bay is going to be right. It's funny, too, when you look at the card. Are, any other fights on that that you're excited to see yourself? I mean, personally? I mean, yeah, just uh, really, you know, Rashad, every time he fights, you know, yeah. Gara's great. Uh, Alistair Overeem is just a specimen. Yeah. You know, he's fighting Bigfoot, too, who's yeah. a, another monster. And then uh, I think Damian, uh, uh, Maya, and Fitch is going to be. A great yeah. fight too so i mean really just and then you got the 25 pounders coming in too yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know it's it's going to be just a phenomenal call and when you're backstage are you able to take any of that in or, or you know it's tough bit? it is tough you know knowing that I'm the, I'm the last fight and usually i'm watching it just to see when it when it when it's over because when am i coming up yeah. you know but anyway it's going to be a good time. It's in Las Vegas, and the odds are probably against you, but we know that that doesn't really mean anything, right? Yeah, this is kind of <laughs> what I'm used to. If, if they were for me, I'd maybe be worried. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's when you worry. Well, Frankie, thank you for talking with My me, and, uh, and I'll see you in Vegas, and best of luck to you. You got it. Thank you. I'm Frankie Edgar, and you're watching MMA Heat.